This is a story about one of Britain's bank managers, Dale Semper, a really successful bank manager. His mother, Lynette, has worked for the NHS for 20 years. His partner of two decades, Denise, works in human resources. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's too big to get kisses, you know. And this is the story of how their happy, successful lives have been almost destroyed. I'm accustomed to being pulled over and stopped when I'm driving cars and so on. I'm accustomed to it. I get it. I never liked it, but I understood. Right? But this particular day when they've come out, it was so many police officers. And they said, um, we're here to arrest you for firearms. I'm like, firearms? I'm like, really? I said, no, you got the wrong person. I don't get this. I'm on my way to work. I'm a bank manager. I do not get this. And I'm arguing. I'm like trying to explain myself. I'm like, no, 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 this can't be, can't be, can't be me. It was the most traumatic experience ever. Being pulled over and before you could blink, the handcuffs were on Dell and he was pulled outside the car and I was trying to understand what is going on. What did we do? Trying to get a sense from the cops and not understanding what's going on and basically just being shouted at to stay in the car, be quiet. We're talking to him. Having this played out before somebody actually gave me some information, we're arresting him on fire on. I'm just like, okay, I can breathe now because I know what it is and I know we don't have any firearms, so, you know, let's let this play out. Police told Dale he was being arrested for possession of a firearm and they had a warrant to search his home. So at that time, I'm thinking, you have about 15, 20 people here. What is that? What could I have actually done to have made something like this happen? Why are they here? Around the same time, Police were breaking into his mother's flat while she worked at the local hospital. I worked for the NHS 20 years come in July. And to hear that guns going through my flat, are they crazy? And when I came home, I saw my door busted. I saw there's a padlock on my door. A lot of things were scattered on my house. All of my drawer with my panties, my bras, everything was pulled out, thrown on the floor. I wouldn't even wish that on my worst enemy. Back at Dale's, the police's line of questioning, which he says he was later to learn underpinned the allegations against him, was how could he afford the things in his house? A nice car. One of the comments the police officer even said when they came in, how did you get to have all these things? I'm like, have all of what? I don't understand. And he's like, it's clear that in one of the statements they've written, they said, we're living above our means. I'm like, how can we're living above our means? You don't know what I do. No firearm was found in his house, his partner's or his mother's. And for the first, but certainly not the last time, the family thought that would be the end of it. But during the search, police found just under £2,000 in Dale's safe. Initially, the arrest was for firearms possession, now it was for money laundering. How is it possible from firearm to money laundering? Something is not quite right. And from the onset, the undertone to this whole investigation was, look at us, we are black people. This is the reason why we, this is continuing and there is no end to this. We both go to work, we both put in our nine to five, we make sure we do that. You know, we didn't come from much, but we're making sure that together we're on the same page, we're doing it for ourselves, and you know, we don't ask for anything. We're out there fighting for it. Dale was suspended from his job at the bank. Police obtained a financial restraint order freezing all his assets. Dale, who owns a number of buy-to-let properties and with his partner shares a six-figure income, says he couldn't even get a pound out of the cash point. Terrified, the couple replaced their legal aid solicitor with a private lawyer for several weeks, focusing on justifying all of Dale's financial dealings. The information he provided was, I have an explanation. I've explained my assets, my finances. He produced, within 24 hours, a file because they said his watch, his jewellery, his possessions were all tainted items. So under the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002, 
they made the assertion that everything was part of the proceeds of crime. They have used shoestring or false intelligence that there's a, a young black man with no previous convictions driving a brand new X6, enjoying life, and then the next day he's the enemy of the state where his assets, his finances are paralysed, his mental health compromised. His whole life is, on, is literally being watched. Seven weeks after it was put in place, the financial restraint order against him was dropped as there was no lawful grounds for it to remain in place. He was awarded £10,000 in costs by the Crown Prosecution Service. Once again, Dale assumed this meant the case against him would be dropped. Once again, he was wrong. After months of asking, the Met Police finally provided the original warrant and details of the information they used to get it. It actually said that I was, in, uh, it said I was involved in a sham marriage, um, money laundering, I'm thinking what? I go by four different aliases, different names, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> what? I'm into drugs and drugs, people, tra human trafficking, and the worst one was terrorism. I'm like, <laughs> Alongside this litany of enormous allegations, they also had to tackle a series of basic errors in the police information about Dale, a British passport holder born in Montserrat. There is this element of being from Jamaica, which he isn't from Jamaica. I am Jamaican. I'm proud of being Jamaican. He has no links to Jamaica apart from me, but he's now being... It's part of what they're investigating. First, he's in the UK illegally. That, that's something that could have been quashed very easily. You know, he's got ties to um, trafficking. Trafficking, come on. It's like they've packed the case so highly for us to defend ourselves that it's gonna overflow. And the overflow is for him to end up in prison. Still suspended from work, for months and months he was left in limbo. One time he called me, he was going to the gym and he called me, he said, Mommy, I'm at the park and I was going to work. And he called me and he was crying and he said, Mommy, I'm going crazy. Why are they doing this to me? You could imagine hearing that from your child. Oh dear, it's a nightmare I can't wake up from. How dark was it for you? It was really, really bad. It got to the point where sometimes I felt like I didn't even want to be around. And I was just like, don't hurt yourself. Promise me you won't hurt yourself. Me and my mother, we bunched you so much, and I never wanted her to ever look back at me and say, this is what my son has amounted to. It was so, such shame. It was such shame. 18 months after he was first arrested, he's arrested again at 20 to 7 in the evening on suspicion of possession of firearms. None are found. At a quarter past seven, just 35 minutes later, he is de-arrested. People will say there's no smoke without fire. It's entirely possible that the Met Police would say, we had credible intelligence that justified this investigation. This started off with false intelligence. A man of no previous convictions, no bad character, not touching a firearm in his life an explanation of every penny he's ever earned in his life from pay slips to tax returns to cash. The question I'd be asking myself as looking at this case would be, to go this far, surely, with all the costs, God knows how much the financial investigation and the CPS spent on this bearing a 26 month case in the public purse, as well as my client defending himself privately, you'd think that there was something. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Dale's lawyer says from the beginning, police obtained warrants based on a wholly inaccurate portrayal of Dale's character and that if he'd been a white bank manager, this would never have happened. On the 11th of October, the Met Police tell Dale's lawyer no further action will be taken in the case. There was no apology. I've had to become the best bank manager for years, for quite a few years. It's something of memories of my past and what I've achieved. But the person I was before now, I feel like that person is now gone. Like I said, I feel like something has been taken away from me and I feel like I can never get that back. If when someone rings my doorbell or even knocks on my door, automatically I think that someone is there to get me. If I'm driving and I see a police siren coming up, even if it's an ambulance, I'm thinking someone is trying to get me, constantly.
I just can't get it out of my head. Dale is back at work, though at a lower grade. His hopes of becoming a director in the bank all gone. It's already cost him around £140,000 in legal costs. He's very conscious of others in a similar situation who couldn't afford to defend themselves. He now intends to sue the Met for damages. The family hope for an apology. It's just really hard to kind of like think, OK, the investigation's over, so OK, we can now breathe. I don't think we will ever be able to breathe. It means so much to me that people that's around me, they would know that I was innocent. I just feel that if you're good people and you're doing things correctly, in the end, you will prevail. It will happen. It has to happen. Well, in response, the Metropolitan Police Service said, given the potential legal action, it would be inappropriate to comment in detail on the case. However, they said they recognise the very serious nature of the allegations made and they will be fully investigated. They say they work every day in and with communities on intelligence-led basis to tackle serious crime and add, where officers have not acted correctly, they will take the appropriate action to ensure the public can continue to have confidence in how they police London. Well, I'm joined now by Victor Olisa, the Metropolitan's former head of diversity and head of policing in Tottenham. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. I just wondered, I know you've seen the, the film, what do you make of it? It's, um, it sounds a harrowing sequence of events for, uh, for Dale and his partner and his, and his mother. Um, 26 months of what must have been hell for him to get to a position when the case is dropped. I mean, the reassuring thing is the Met are saying they are serious allegations, they're going to investigate it thoroughly, uh, and that must be some consolation at this stage to Dale that there will be a thorough investigation and... Um, Hopefully something positive will come out of it. I mean, when you became head of diversity at the Met in 2016, you said that the Met still discriminates against black people, falling behind negative stereotypes. Do you accept that that still seems to be true in some instances in this case? Well, you know, at this stage, this is an allegation and there needs to be an investigation, but taking the information that we have and the ten and a half minutes of uh, video that you've shown, there are many, many things there to actually explain, uh, and some of them is very, very easy to turn around and say, is it because he's black? And that was asked in the, uh, in the footage that you've just shown. Um, you know, would that have happened to a black manager? Would that have happened if Dale had been a white, blank manager? Uh, and sometimes it's very, very difficult to not be tempted to say, no, it wouldn't have happened if it was a, you know, a white bank manager and some of the things have happened to him, were they because he was black? And, again, as you've shown in your footage, living in a, in a, in a nice house, you know, an expensive commodity, and there's the allegation or the questioning of how could he afford that, purely and simply because of the skin of his colour. So the, the, that footage indicates. I mean, speaking more widely, these negative stereotypes that you raised when you were head of diversity at the Met, they matter, don't they? Because you said yourself that it can lead to police using disproportionate force against black people. And that is a real issue that is so pertinent at the moment, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're all, you know, we're all going through, living through the, the killing of George Floyd in the United States. We see on social media here footage of of, um, you know, black elderly men being tasered. Um, and we, we read in our newspapers, not necessarily the violence, but the disproportionate issue in a fixed penalty notice for people who have broken the lockdown. All these things paint a picture. Uh, and the paint a picture where it sometimes is very difficult to move away and not make the assumption that, you know, there is, is there some racial motivation behind it? And, in essence, it leaves the Metropolitan Police as an organisation in a difficult place because they're always, you know, they seem to be on the back foot when these stories come out and they have to work really hard to either be proactive and stop these stories coming out or have an explanation beforehand because they need to work even harder to get to a position where they can explain the rationality behind some of these stories that just look unacceptable and and point towards the allegations of the Met might be policing in a way that's discriminatory and racially discriminatory. Victor Elisa, I'm sorry, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for talking to us this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you.